good evening. Apologies for my voice. It's double tested non COVID 19 symptom. I would like to thank Safety for C for the kind invitation. Today I'm going to present a combination of solutions targeting sustainable decarbonization. Um, CMMI is a leading organization in a consortium of 10 members for a project uh, called uh, Green Marine. So we are trying to theoretically and experimentally examine a combination of solutions, as I said, targeting sustainable decarbonization. The term sustainable is in order to check that the solution is examined under well to propeller, well to weight, and of course, under life cycle assessment. Because there are proposed solutions that are good, of course, and the question is, where we do we stand with decarbonization? We have market-based measures, of course, functioning as incentives or penalties. We have uh, proposed solutions with limited maturity, applicability and availability. And the main reason is that when we refer to green solutions, I mean pure green solutions, there are no available green, pure green resources. In case we exclude nuclear power, where of course we have carbon neutral production of energy, but not a green one. So, um, what do we do? Of course, we cannot wait for the silver bullet. There is no silver bullet and there will be no silver bullet in the future. When I say impossible, impossible is not a rhetoric term. Impossible in terms of engineering means violation of the basic, the fundamental laws of physics and thermodynamics. So what we have to do is just to improve the efficiency of the existing solutions. In this project, Green Marine, and in the other projects running now at CMMI, we have focused on, first, the electrification of small vessels, taking into consideration that the source of energy is coming from photovoltaics, and we also work on biofuels. More specifically, here in Cyprus, we deal with biomethane. So we have running projects to examine the use of biomethane in marine diesel engines and the use of compressed bio uh, LNG in applications that are related to cold iron. Apart of them, we also have the carbon capture applications. We specifically deal with post-combustion capture and we focus on chemical absorption processes. We have selected the application which deals with the mineralization of uh, uh, carbon, of CO2, and let me show the general carbon capture and utilization uh, flowchart. So we have the marine internal combustion engine, a scrubber with solvents. So we utilize chemical absorption and then we can store on board or we can also use waste heat 
coming from the inner combustion engine in order to release CO2 in gaseous phase. We transport, we need tankers for liquefied CO2. And then one solution is to use oil and gas industry for storage or to direct utilize in various applications the CO2 recovered. What are the challenges? The major challenges are in case of uh, onboard application, of course. The major challenges are dealing with the space and the weight. So we need to install certain devices on board the vessel. So we need to solve a lot of problems regarding the utilization of uh, CCUS application. One important thing is that to, we have to realize that when we burn one kilogram of fuel, I mean fossil fuel, we produce three plus kilograms of CO2. So in order to store it on board, it means that you occupy space, but also you have to take into consideration that there is a matter of uh, reduction in payload. So we need to optimize the amount of CO2 to be captured in terms of the route of the vessel, the overall operational profile of the vessel, and of course the installation to be installed on board the vessel and the investment as well. So in this uh, EU-funded project, apart from the carbon capture technology, we also examine a, a set of uh, applications. For example, we use uh, waste heat in order to produce electricity and in order to electrolyze water, in order to produce hydrogen, so as to produce syn gas on board the vessel. Another uh, important application is the use of membranes so as to have pure water because you need pure water for the electrolysis. Another use of these membranes is for the reuse of air when we deal with the HVAC system. What we have learned from the pandemic was that we need to reduce the energy we pay, the energy we need for HVAC because of the fresh air to be provided and not recycled. So uh, we experimentally, I have to underline that, we experimentally examine all these uh, applications here in Cyprus and we believe that at the end of the day we will contribute a small part of the major solution uh, which deals with uh, decarbonization. 2030 is tomorrow and 2050 is next week. So uh, I believe that regarding decarbonization, a plethora of various solutions is required in order to have a result at the end of the day. So we will use uh, different CCUS uh, applications as I said, the one is the absorption and the other is the use of membranes. We will also use membranes for the HVAC system and we will use a software so as to have a digital twinning of the overall system and a decision supporting tool at the end of the project. The success will be based on the increase of percentage of CO2 captured and the reduce in fuel consumption. So, to conclude, as I said, uh, there is no silver bullet. And uh, I believe that uh, for the decades to come, decarbonization will be an ongoing project. A project which needs a multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary uh, approach. And of course, as always, all the 
chaotic problems need a simplified but a simplified but a solution that is based on facts and figures thank you Thank <laughs> you.